Hello and welcome one more time, Alex Anteno here with yet another super exciting DaVinci Resolve automation tutorial. In my opinion, let computers do what computers do best and let us do what we do best. So quick question, wouldn't be awesome if we could do all of the work on our videos, you know, the setup of the timelines and do all of our edits, color grading, audio correction, the whole thing. And then when we're done, simply press a key combination on your computer and almost by magic, add all of those timelines to the render queue and start rendering them all. That would be cool. Well, after this tutorial, you'll be able to do exactly that. All right, before we begin, however, for those of you who are new to the channel or those of you who are afraid of subscribing to YouTube channels, uh, please take a moment to, to subscribe to the, to the channel to hit the subscribe button and the like button because that helps other people interested in this kind of content to be able to get it. Now, those of you who are already subscribed and got a no notification when this video became available, please take a moment to create another YouTube account and subscribe again for good measure. Just kidding. Let's get to it. All righty. So I am here in DaVinci Resolve 18, but uh, this technique I think works with anything above DaVinci Resolve 16. So uh, you should be good to go. Um, this is the DaVinci Resolve Studio version, and that's an important caveat because with the free version, you won't be able to do scripting through the console. So uh, I encourage you to invest the $350 or $300 to purchase the studio version because it's absolutely worth it. So, um, so with that in mind, I am here. I have a clip and uh, basically just uh, an empty project. And what I'm going to do is create a timeline by clicking and dragging my clip inside of the timeline. It is named by default timeline one. And what I'm gonna do is duplicate that timeline. So we have two, I'm gonna rename this one timeline two so that we, well, so that we have one timeline one and one timeline two. Perfect. In this timeline two, let's go ahead and change it a little bit so that um, our chameleon here changes color a little bit so we can distinguish them. All right. So now we have a timeline one and we have a timeline two. Timeline one has a little bit of coloring. Timeline two has the regular coloring. All right. And let's say that we have done all of the different edits and all the stuff that we wanted in each one of the timelines. And so um, I am ready to go. I don't want to start adding all the features, all the different rendering settings, all of that stuff. I don't want to have to do it one by one, especially if I have like 10 or 20 timelines. In this case, it's only two. But if you do this constantly, especially if you're a YouTuber or if you are a social media manager doing this for several brands, then you obviously are not going to be doing this. Uh, you don't want to do it one at a time. So what I'm going to do is press Control Option R. And what that's going to do is going to add automatically all of my timelines to the render queue with the presets that I have defined. And then it's going to go ahead and render those. And then I am done. I don't have to go ahead and add all of them. Each one, select each one for uh, the settings and whatnot. So how did the, how do we do this? That's what we're going to take a look right now. This is a Python script. Uh, from the video before, you would be able to learn a little bit about the foundation file. Um, I encourage you to watch that video if you haven't, because that would help you, you know, not have to write again and again the things that are necessary for running uh, DaVinci Resolve and calling all the necessary objects and the API and whatnot. So um, what I do is just insert my own foundation file by this line, and then uh, I don't have to be creating all of the different components every time. The first thing is that I'm going to set this as CD. Therefore, my objects are going to be 
uh, with that notation. So everything is going to start with CD. So the first one is CD.project, and then I'm setting the preset that I want to use for the render. So it's always going to be H.264. The second thing is the render settings, and um, I've set up some uh, general settings here, for example, that I want to render all the frames, uh, a target directory so that it creates a subfolder inside of my desktop and uh, calls it DaVinci Tutorial, and then encodes with the profile of high, and then gives it a unique file name, uh, in this case with a suffix, that's what the one means instead of a prefix, which would be a zero. Let's say that I don't remember what are the settings themselves, and that is a pretty cool question. Uh, so let's go to this. So let me show you. Um, I created this scripting documentation cheat sheet that is for sale inside of alexthecreative.com. So you can get it, and uh, it's really like for the price of a cup of coffees at Starbucks. So it's like $7.99 or something like that. And uh, basically what you need to do is just uh, type set uh, render settings. Like I just typed set render. It starts to filter all the different galleries or all the different um, APIs. And then I can just take a look at the one that is set render settings, click there, and it takes me to that position in the documentation instead of the documentation that comes with DaVinci Resolve. You know, you, if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. So and here you can just take a look at, at the different things that you can add to those settings. Of course, this documentation works with all the objects. So all the objects have different properties and methods. And so you can just uh, filter without having to remember all of them. So a lot better than using the official documentation, in my opinion, but for $7.99, I think it's a pretty good deal. Anyways, now that we know what to include here, then you include what whatever you want in the set render settings. And then we just uh, count the timelines and we iterate over the timelines so that we can just add them to the render queue and then start rendering them. Basically, that's all that it takes in the Python script. So now the second thing would be, how do we call that in a service? And then thirdly, once we have the service, how do we call that with a keyword, uh, a keyboard shortcut? All right, so let's take a look at how to create the service. And we're going to do that in Automator. So if you're in a PC, I don't know how to do it in a PC, but I'm sure that you can create macros inside of a PC. So look into that. Uh, but in a Mac, this is how you create a service in Automator. So we're going to go to Automator. And from here, we're going to simply add uh, from the library. We're going to add an action of run shell script. Then we're going to add all of the components of uh, the APIs because they're not loaded by default. And then we're going to call the actual Python file that we just looked at. So I'm calling the Python executable, executable, excuse me, uh, and then just calling that Python script. So anytime that I run this quick action, so when you're creating the automator action, you're going to create it not as a, uh, not, not as a um, workflow, but as a quick action. And so um, once you create that, then you add the shell script and then it's going to appear as a quick action inside of your services. And now we can assign a keyboard shortcut to any service. But in this case, we're going to assign it to this one that I have called render timelines. So let's take a look at that. So I'm going to go to my system preferences and inside of system preferences, I'm going to go to keyboard shortcuts. And inside of shortcuts, we're going to go to services and then I'm going to just scroll down all the way to the bottom. Here you're going to see all your general ones, uh, all the ones you've created generally are going to appear here and you can assign a keyboard 
um, shortcut that you prefer. In my case, I did control option R because I don't use that for anything, but you can use whatever you prefer. And basically this is what connects the shortcut, the keyboard shortcut to the actual quick action, which is a service and runs my Python script. So you can use this obviously for any Python script that you create. So it can be any of the ones that we've seen in previous videos, but in this particular one, we're using it for rendering timelines, all of the timelines automatically. So if we go to the DaVinci tutorial folder inside of my desktop, you can see that I have rendered both of my timelines individually, different naming and all automatically with, without me having to do it manually. I hope that this has been helpful. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like, subscribe, and the notification bell in case you want more videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.